Okay, so before we start each uh, pails and rails session or our, or our isometric loads, we have, we're going to start with two minutes of stretching in a position. A uh, minimum of two minutes just to, is the bare minimum of stretching so we can really enforce that message to the cells um, and our tissue that that's the position and the, um, the direction we want to get our joints to go. Um, so under two minutes doesn't really do um, anything, um, so we need to really emphasize on two minutes plus of good uh, stretching. And you can move in, in and out of the position 10 to 15 degrees if you need to adjust and just kind of play with the, play with the position. And you can do this in all positions, so you can find a new tension line and then hold that for two minutes. Um, find other tension lines and go for a couple minutes. Um, so from there we're going to do the two minute stretching and then immediately followed by our angular isometric loads. So I'm going to demonstrate those starting with one of which is the 90-90 stretch um, which is pretty much exactly like it sounds. So we're going to put both legs to 90 degrees and square our hips off. So 90 degrees at the front leg and then 90 degrees at the back leg in line with your hip. So you're going to rotate and square up to the front leg, making sure your knee, both ankles, both knees are on the floor. Nice proud chest, not kind of slumping over here. Keep a true spine and see if we can hang out here and find a little tension and hold for two minutes. And you can use your hands and again play with the angles for uh, two minutes. And then from here, we're going to flip sides, pivot off of this leg, external rotation, internal rotation, and we're going to go into the other side of our 90-90 stretch. Two minutes. One side might feel a little bit tighter. And again, both knees, both ankles on the ground. And then from here, we're going to go into our isometric loads. So, after your two minutes are done, you can switch back to the other leg if you want. Again, pivot off that back toe and the toes and pull yourself into that stretch. So if you can't get here, you can easily put a towel underneath your butt um, or a yoga block or whatever is going to make it more comfortable if you can't sit like this and keep both uh, knees and hips and feet down. So again, we're going to square off and what I want you to do is we're going to pale, which is a progressive angular load, isometric load, and think of it as opening up a joint and then a rail, which is a regressive angular isometric load, and think of it as kind of closing a joint. So I'm going to rail first, and I'm going to try to pick this front leg up and activate this whole anterior tissue of my hip and knee and even my ankle. So I'm going to pull up get that feeling of lifting up my leg using my leg and then I'm going to keep that same effort as I come down and keep trying to lift my leg off the floor pulling myself into my thigh holding 20 seconds ish and then when that 20 seconds is up I'm going to push into the floor isometrically like I'm trying to push the floor away and trying to open up that angle after that 20 seconds is done, keep that pressure and push yourself back up. And then you can even rotate to the other side. And if you can't square yourself off without this leg popping up, you can recline a little bit and then hold from there and then eventually creep your way back up. Okay, then we're going to pivot off of these sides, toes again to the other side, pale and rail down, and then we're going to repeat from there. Do three sets of 20 seconds, uh, three times each. So what that will look like is I'm going to pull myself down, hold 20 seconds, push into the floor for 20 seconds, come up, repeat 20 seconds, pull, 20 seconds push, come back up, one more and repeat, and then other side. And then from there, we're going to do some end range control motions. 
So we'll go into here, and what I'm going to have you do is you can pick one leg up as high as it will go, and then you're going to try to hold that leg there. Okay, and then you can set it down. Again, training internal rotation of the hip, training rotations of the knee joint there, and then you do the same thing for the front leg. Just hold that guy up, or you can pull it up, and then try to hold this position. And then back down. So those are end range controls, passive range, end range. So picture, I can pull myself up here, and then I'm gonna try to hold my leg here because I'm gonna let go. And this is a end range control here. So pull this as high as I can get, pulling, 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 and holding. And then back out. So again, 20 seconds ish holding those. And we'll go from there. So the next one I'm going to have you do is a half kneeling stretch and end range. So again, we're going to work on that, that knee here and that flexion. So I'm going to have you do is you're going to do a half kneel, kind of like a lunge. And you're going to pull on this leg. Again, if this is uncomfortable for your knee, you can do it on the ground, laying on your side. Or you can use a bench or a wall. So what I'll have you do is you can put one leg up here and if this if your knee won't go this far you can come forward here and you're gonna hold this position. Two minutes and then what I'm gonna have you do is push into the chair and again we're getting to that end range and making that tissue work at an end range don't push too hard, just a very light contraction, trying to extend your leg like a knee extension. And then try to push yourself back into it a little further. And then again, push into chair or the bench, whichever your foot's on, or if you're hanging onto your hand. Push into your hand and then glide into that. And then an end range control from here is pull your leg up as far as it'll go and then try to let go and hold it there. You might cramp, cramping is okay. It's just tissue that hasn't been in that position for a really long time and just sending your nervous system through a little tizzy there. 